there folks, it's Richard of DoomMovieThon.com. I'm back with another episode of My Horror Shelfie. My Horror Shelfie is a series where I talk about every single horror movie on my horror movie shelves from A to Z with words, mostly sounds. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, this is your first time and you want to see more about my Giallo collection. The first two videos in the series, because this is part three, are, you know, linked below and stuff. I really want to finish the series because apparently there's something else in this world besides Giallo. Don't tell me that. So when I last left you, I made a little boo-boo with the sound, and um, most of my review of uh, In the Folds of the Flesh was completely muted. Sum it up, the dubbing on this is some of the funniest, craziest dubbing I've ever heard. Uh, we covered this on my podcast, Hello, This is the Doomed Show. Uh, if you go to doommoviethon.com, there's a link to the podcast, so you can listen to us at Legion Podcasts, or you can listen to us at Podomatic. Uh, the archive, though, this is an old episode, way back with my pal Jeffrey. Uh, if you want to listen to In the Folds of the Flesh, hear us go through the whole movie, do that. Okay, that's the old business. Let's get on to the new business. I got a huge frickin' stack of stuff here. Wow. Let's do more talking, because apparently I don't talk enough. Oh, what a quiet guy, they said. Kill Her Nun! Uh, this is a movie that I have seen very few times, but I really enjoy it. It's super trashy. Um, if you don't like uh, old folks being cruelly picked on by an evil nun, dare I say it, a killer nun, maybe skip this one. Um, if you are a heartless bastard, uh, then you should watch this. This is crazy. I really like the score for this. The main theme for this one is really strange. I can't think of anything to say about this. It has been so long. <laughs> so yeah, way overdue for a rewatch. Let's talk about Fulci. Wait, why is this open? Uh, Lucio Fulci's uh, A Lizard in a Woman's Skin. Wow, what a freaking classic. This one had some funny releases over the years. Uh, good old uh, Shriek Show. They did the best they could. They had the uncensored version in full frame and on the bonus disc they had the very much cut version on widescreen. Whew, that was tough to get out. Uh, but here Mondo Macabro has the full version in all its beautiful full widescreen. <laughs> it's widescreen glory. I don't know what I'm talking about. Florinda Balkin, one of the first ladies of Giallo, is exceptionally great in this movie. And it's just so stylish. You need to see this if you have not already. Monster of Venice. Here's another one I don't watch very often, uh, but I love talking about the good old Retro Media label. Uh, Retro Media is one of my favorite labels from the DVD era. They always had the best copy they could find of things. So a lot of times, movies that were in the public domain, they were always full frame crappy transfers on those uh, budget compilations. Retro Media would have your back and actually have it in widescreen most of the time. And of course, this is also known as the Embalmer. Uh, this is not a popular title, and for good reason. It's super clunky. I mean, this is a clunky, clunky movie, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, you can see the early days of the Giallo black and white goodness. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. They like, come and we want to go snap. So, dude, movie opinions are pointless. I love Murder Obsession. Capital L, capital O, capital V, capital G, -G M. I love them. This movie is so good. Oh my god, Ricardo Freda. This one was going to be his big comeback to horror. It was a huge flop. Nobody liked it. Um, except for me, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know some friends who really enjoy this one, and I highly recommend it. Gothic horror perfection. Sleazy giallo crap. Awesome. Somehow Raro Video put out a good Blu-ray. Raro Video, I love you guys. Sometimes your transfers are rough. Look up the movies. Read the reviews before you pick up one of these. Sometimes they do good stuff. Sometimes they put out really poor transfers. Um, and I don't even think they're around anymore. Rero Video, if you're still out there, maybe put out better stuff, but this is a good one. Speaking of Lucio Fulci, it's everyone's not favorite murder rock, uh, Dance of Death. Yeah, people don't really like this one because it has no gore. Um, it's just super tacky. The music uh, numbers are really funny. Uh, it's got 
some break dancing in it. Um, I'm a fan, and it's it's uh, it's good stuff. Uh, Naked girl kill. Ooh. Naked girl killed in the park. Uh, this one is really fun. Not very original, but stylish. Plenty of violence going on in it. I like it. Full Moon had some problems with this disc, so they put out the English dub first, and it was a complete and utter disaster. Folks, I'm very forgiving with, you know, troublesome discs, but this was unlistenable. It was like someone putting a tin can over your ear and then screaming into your ear, um, but less pleasant. They immediately realized they had a problem after it came out, and they issued the discs replacement discs with subtitles. It was the Italian with English subtitles. Audio's great. Subtitles are easy to read. The transfer is pretty good, so it's probably safe to get this one now. If you pick this up and it is in English, dubbed, immediately write to Full Moon and they will send you a replacement if they already haven't sent out the discs with the uh, Italian uh, dub on there. Naked You Die from Antonio Margheriti. Uh, this one was put out by Dark Sky Films a while ago. This is a bright, colorful pop kind of giallo, not pop art, but uh, feels very much a product of the early 60s, mid 60s. The main girl in this looks like Jerry Blank. <laughs> if you've ever seen a little show called Strangers with Candy, you know what I'm talking about. Naked You Die is great, elaborate, silly plot, and like I said, very colorful. Oh boy, let's get sleazy, trashy, and dirty, dirty. The New York Ripper with its beautiful ventricular, is that the word? 3D's nuts cover, whatever. Blue Underground put out this radness, and my buddy Scott from EuroCultAV.com, he sent me this. It is so great. This will be covered in my next book, Giallo Meltdown 2. Giallo Meltdown a movie thon diary is available now on Amazon.com. It does not include New York Ripper. That's weird. Why? Because I messed up. But don't worry, this will be in the second book, which I'm currently about 12 or 13 chapters in, so hooray for me and productivity. This is really trashy. This is um, Fulci trying to keep up with the times and um, make a really, really, dare I say it, misogynistic slasher movie. <laughs> <laughs> but he did it too well and everyone got mad at him which is he's like hey here's what the people want and it wasn't what the people wanted they were done with that stuff so had this come out in 81 or 80 I think the backlash wouldn't have happened Fulci's a real son of a biscuit oh doctor we got the Red Queen kills seven times and uh, the night Evelyn came out of the grave uh, this is the Emilio P Miraglia set here from the now totally gone no shame um i love love night evelyn came out of her grave that was one of my very first gialli i got it on one of those budget compilations when i got back into horror in early 2002 i got really heavy back into horror bought these budget compilations and the night evelyn came out of the grave had to check that out and it's such a strange odd little movie it hit me in that vibe that euro horror giallo vibe just right smack between my eyeball head. And um, I love it. I have purchased <laughs> The Night Evelyn Came Out of Her Grave a number of times, trying to get a good copy of it. There is a Blu-ray. I'm working on acquiring that, uh, but I highly recommend it. It's real stupid, plot didn't make any sense, and the lead dude, our hero, is a complete piece of shit. It's great. Red Queen Kills Seven Times is amazing. It is one of the big budget giallo, I think. Lots of characters, cool sets, gothic and trashy 1972 uh, fashion models. Uh, but yeah, excellent movie. So what happens when a tried and true giallo boy like Umberto Lenzi is told to make a slasher? He makes a giallo that's just slasher enough to be a slasher. This is Nightmare Beach I can't believe this is on Blu-ray. What a joy. Um, if you want to have a good time with your friends, watch something real dumb that really delivers on the fun of a slasher while still having a very typical giallo plot, um, 
go for it. Super tacky 80s, huge fingernails on the ladies, giant hair on everybody, mullets. Can't recommend this highly enough. Are these just trashy movies? Be honest. Be honest. Be honest. Too Beautiful to Die with uh, good old uh, uh, nothing underneath. Uh, this is a fine pair of films. Uh, very, very fashion house heavy. Um, 80s giallos, they're very, very, very 80s. A, a acquaintance of mine uh, is uh, good old uh, Rachel Nisbet. She does the audio commentaries for these. Um, you should check out this for her because she's cool. Uh, my biggest complaint here is the music is super loud and the dialogue is super quiet. So you're gonna need those subtitles. It's not great, but the picture is flawless. They look beautiful. So just, you know, turn those subtitles on. Hey, did you guys ever see that movie Deep Red? Check it out. Whoosh. This is just like the movie Deep Red. Hey, this is just like the movie Deep Red. Hey, this is just like the movie Deep Red. You can go back to sleep if you want. Opera. Opera Argentos. This is opera. Um, not one of my favorite Argentos. I do enjoy it. Um, I mean, overall, it's excellent. A lot of folks say, like, this is his last great movie, and I'm like, well, there's always Dracula 3D. Did you think of that? You know what? I'll tell you what I think his last great movie is. It's coming up later in this series. Oh, Doctor Perfume of the Lady in Black. <sighs> Raro video. This DVD is one of my prized possessions. Um, this is the second time I purchased this movie. I had the old Italian DVD. At least I think it was Italian. Um, I know it had English subtitles, or maybe it was even the dubbed version. Um, this is good old Mimsy Farmer. I don't know if they wrote this for her, but she really, really dives into this role. Um, it's just creepy and weird, mysterious. I, I can't get enough of it. People hate the ending on this, which drives me nuts because the ending is weird. Like, left field, probably supernatural, even though there's hints through the whole movie. It's just weird. It's a really weird ending. You know what's not bad? Weird endings. Seriously, like, what's wrong with it just being weird? For every well-written, perfect, you know, by-the-numbers, awesome giallo plot ending, there's like 500 not good plots. So I'd rather them do something strange than fail at explaining what's been going on the whole movie, so... Huh. Case closed. <laughs> movie opinions are cool, dude! Lucio Fulci will not stay out of this discussion. Stay out, Fulci. So, Perversion Story, from uh, our friends at Severin, the old DVD. Not a huge fan of this one. It's got some really great touches. Um, Fulci kind of working out his grief uh, from he lost his wife very young. And I think there's a couple of moments in here where he's trying to cope with that by putting it on screen, like the grief. You know, that's the best stuff in the movie, I think. Um, as for... The plot, it's very, very giallo, you know, nothing new there. Um, I really like the cast, everyone's great. But I have a little trouble with this one. Not a favorite. I think this might be one of my least favorite of his gialli, but it's still really good. Okay, hold the phone here, people. Hold the figgity phone. Pardon my language. It's Phenomena, aka Creepers. Um, for many years, this was my favorite film of all time. Uh, it's kind of been bumped by The House by the Cemetery, but I love Phenomena. I watch this all the time. I've seen this so many frickin' times. It's ridiculous. I just adore this. This was my first Argento film. I heard about it on a little show called Stephen King's World of Horror, aka This Is Horror, that played on MTV, and they had clips from this. Um, it might have been clips from that Masters of Horror Argento Maestro of Horror? The, the documentary that Michele Suave uh, directed. I think they pulled clips from that. I fell in love with Creepers, and I've watched it so many times as a kid, and then I finally have this Blu-ray. Uh, thank you to my pal Simon for sending me this all the way from the UK. I love it. This is where I learned what I wanted from horror, and from Giallo. I didn't know what a Giallo was when I first saw this movie, so... Whew! Getting down to the last two. If you're still watching, thank you for getting this far. Oh my god. Plot of Fear. Uh, just rewatched this recently. Speaking of Rachel Nisbet, 
her Fragments of Fear podcast. Her and her buddy talked about Plot of Fear, Fragments of Fear, Plot of Fear podcast. Go listen to it. Uh, but yeah, Plot of Fear is so good. Yeah, I have the Italian DVD. This is the, uh, the, the Raro video by way of Italy. This is actually like one of their Italian ones. Glad it has an English option. Okay, last movie. Speak, 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 speak. Speaking of movies I don't watch nearly enough, we've got a puzzle. Good old puzzle with Luke Morenda. Um, this is a fine, fine example um, of one of the later Giallo movies. It's got the uh, chainsaw in it, and it's just something really good about it. I like it. The score is also really nice, too. This is my Italian DVD. No, wait. Is this Italian? This looks like Dutch. This, I don't know. I don't think that's German on the back. I think that's Dutch. <laughs> but yes, it has an English option. Uh, God, I've, hold, I've held on to some of these things for years. Oh, that's all of them. Folks, thank you so much for hanging out. I really appreciate it. You guys are so nice and cool. Speaking of Giallo, have you seen Bewitched? Speaking of Giallo, have you seen Dream a Little?